Howdy, partner. Yeah, I'm talking to you, riding on your high horse and your Range Rover. It was built by Brits, wasn't it? Same guys my great, 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 great granddaddy, Jeremiah, Judah, Elias, Tobias, Poole, defeated back at Bunker Hill in 75. 1775, that is. And I see you, Mr. Toyota Sequoia. Name's a truck after a tree, anyway. And I ain't even gotten to you yet, Mr. Caddy Lackescolade. Ain't no man has been, is, or ever will be. Half the man's the last great man to drive a Cadillac was, Mr. Motorside Phil. What you need is eight cylinders. Actually, actually, I ain't got eight, I got six. Six cylinders of Detroit iron. I ain't got iron either, I got aluminum. What you need is six cylinders of aluminum power, four by four, 22 inch rims, and more leather inside than a Cheney and Son saddlery. More importantly than that, you need a blue oval on the grill. You need the pride of Louisville, Kentucky. The Ford Expedition King Ranch. Kidding aside, this is the 2020 Ford Expedition King Ranch. I believe that's so named for a ranch in Texas that's like the size of Rhode Island or something, known for its cattle rearing or whatever. And I think the squiggly kind of lines you see here on the, uh, it's kind of like the King Ranch graphic. I think that has to do with the fact there's a lot of rattlesnakes on the ranch or something. Anyway, so this is second from the top of the line uh, in the Expedition lineup in Canada. The Platinum is above this. About 80,000 bucks, and for that you get well, pretty much everything, really. Uh, the only thing you don't get off the Platinum is some special suspension and uh, slightly different wheels, and I guess the Platinum also gets different seats as well, which is interesting because I am concerned that these seats aren't quite gonna be like wide enough. I feel like the seat backs are really narrow for me, um, and they're not super highly bolstered, so I'm worried I'm not gonna be as sport as I'd like, but we'll see. Otherwise, though, pretty good seating position. Um, I'll have to start the engine to get in the proper seat position because the seat comes back when you turn it off and it's kind of cool. So this is how I'm going to be driving. Uh, steering wheel is good. It's a little bit upright, uh, which is a lot like it is in the F-150 pickup with which this shares a platform, obviously. So a little bit upright steering wheel, but I'm sure I'll get used to that. Uh, the steering wheel is heated. Not surprised to know that, of course. Um, great view out around all sides, actually. The rear window is huge. Side windows are nice and tall. Your vision out is awesome. Plus, you've got blind spot systems and all that kind of stuff, too, of course. Um, and other than the, other than the, the seat, it is massive feeling here. I've got the big the big cowboy hat on. No problem fitting in here. I could wear this no problem. Even if I put the screen forward on the sunroof, which takes some time, I will admit. And it's a two stage thing. It first does half the huge moonroof, then you press the button again, and it does the rest of it there. So I think even with this like the uh, sunroof shield on there, you can still wear this hat comfortably. So lots of headroom all the way down to the back seat. There's plenty of headroom. Um, Elbow room, shoulder room, leg room, all that kind of stuff. No problem, as you'd expect with uh, a truck this big. I mean, this is the biggest SUV in Ford's lineup. Um, and all here, as you can see, I think the passenger gets one too. Pretty important when you're doing any off-roading or any ranching. <laughs> um, but yeah, really, really nice in here. Uh, this the, the shift lever isn't the lever. It's the kind of scroll wheel here. 
How you feel about that, I think, depends on a few things. If you're used to having kind of, you know, the column mounted shifter or a console mounted shifter, might rub some people the wrong way, but it's great to reduce clutter. You can kind of store stuff in here, less of a problem. Uh, although I am surprised that since it is an electronic shifter, I don't have more room to store stuff underneath here. Probably because with the big 4x4 driveline this has and differentials, it just isn't enough room for that. But oftentimes when you move to an electronic shifter like this, you get some extra room underneath there because you don't need the shift linkage anyway. It doesn't have that drive mode controllers here as well. We'll look at all this in more depth in the dash view in a little while, but uh, super comfortable up here. Big, airy, just as a full size you know, SUV should be. So just like you have in the front, a side step makes it a little bit easier to get in the back, which is nice. So we're in the second row now. This is the captain's chair setup. I believe there's also a bench chair option for the King Ranch version. I'll double check that for the review. That's going to go to wheels.ca soon. And of course, with the bench, you get the extra seat, but you lose this great passageway to the rear seats, which is like two feet wide. I think even larger people have no trouble clambering back there through here. So that's, so that's great. Also, these captain's chairs are the tilt and slide variety. So by pulling the lever on the shoulder there, the chair both tilts and slides forward. So if you have a baby or child seat installed, you don't have to remove it to get to the third row. Uh, lots of features back here. Heated seats. I've got two USB ports. I've also got my own climate control system. The two USB ports up front, two USB ports back there too. I've got a 110 volt charging port here too. So plenty of ways to charge your device, which is good because there's a Wi-Fi system. You're going to pair a lot of devices to it. So you want to be able to charge them. Uh, seat is mounted higher here than the front, which is good. This you see over the headrest a little bit easier. I remember the last generation expedition sitting in that second row, that headrest is like right in your grill. So kind of distracting so you don't have that anymore. Of course though, the higher mounted seat, yep, cowboy hat's got to go because I'm bumping up against the headliner now. Probably have more room if I slid this screen back, but it's not bad once the hat is off. Um, comfortable seat, big armrest, which is great. The floor is a little bit high. You've got all that 4x4 four four running gear under there, so they got to push the floor up, so it does push my knees up a little bit, but it's not the worst I've seen. Um, so comfortable overall. I've also got two speakers in the door, which are two of like 40 in here. I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot, I guess, because it's a great sound system. Uh, by by bang olson so that's great two hand holds for all you ranchers and off-roaders so lots of good features back here i'm less enamored though with the storage options i have which or actually more like the storage options i don't have as far as couple as well i've got these two here but and that's great but if i'm a smaller person sitting back here those would be tough to reach especially with a seatbelt on so i do have something as you saw in the earlier clips here that's kind of looks like a cup holder but it's shallow and squares so how many cups are really going to fit in there there's another storage bin down here but it's very tough to get your hand in there and it's so low you can barely see what's in there anyway so not blown away by the rear seat storage there's a little bit of a pocket here too but again it's, it's so narrow and what's annoying is lots of things that look like they could be really good but then once you really look at it they're there's they're they're going to leave you wanting a little bit which is too bad but overall very comfortable third uh, second row here let's have a look what the third row is all about So as I suspected, getting the, the third row through the second row captain's chairs is actually quite easy to do. And once back here, I got to say, this is a proper third row. Yeah, I wouldn't wear a cowboy hat here. In fact, I wouldn't wear any hat back here, but without it, I could sit up straight. Yeah, my head's rubbing the headliner a little bit, but that's more my COVID cut here causing the problem. So, so that's not a big deal at all. If I want more room for my legs, I can always kind of slide this uh, second row seat forward a little bit if I want. And on top of all that, I've got power adjusting seat backs back here, which is pretty awesome for a third row. I think I like the storage back here better than I like the storage in the second row too. I've got a cup holder here, some storage bins, two cup holders here, another storage bin. That's awesome. Two USB ports too. So like they've got everything back here. And don't think if you go to the Max version of the Expedition, you're going to get more room back here. The only difference between the Max and the regular Expedition is that with the Max's longer wheelbase and slightly longer overall kind of length, you get more room of, uh, for storage behind the third row. That's about it. Everything else in here is the same, so so that's great. This is a, a throw row I could see myself living with for even medium length drives, so well done for it. So while you have to upgrade to the platinum level of the Expedition if you want a foot activated tailgate, you do get power folding third row seating here, and you can also actually fold the second row from back here too. Can't bring them back up, but you can fold them. So just a matter of reaching for this button right here. Left side goes down, right side goes down. So as you'd expect from a full-size SUV like this, 
it's pretty big in here for the most part. There are a couple of strange shortcomings we'll get to in a minute, but big, huge steering wheel, big dash, dual stage glove box, huge storage bin, the center console makes up for the fact they don't have under console storage like I talked about in the last clip. Uh, you can also use the wireless charge pad area here, which you can, sorry, tilt that down a bit, Wild charge, uh, wireless charge pad area here to store if you want. So, so that's all really, really good. But there are some things that are surprisingly small for such a big car. Let's take a look at the sunglasses holder, for example. I've got mine up here, just a pair of regular, you know, kind of Ray-Ban wave fairs. I try to put them in the sunglass holder and it is super weird and kind of like finicky to get that in there like and these aren't huge glasses by any means so I'd rather keep those keep those up there also small are these buttons down here which are actually for your climate control system and it's too bad they're small because oftentimes you want to operate your climate control with gloves on because maybe it's cold in the vehicle and you want to wear your gloves until it heats up so your chances are you're going to be using this with your gloves so that's a little bit small and also there's the center uh the center main infotainment display it doesn't it doesn't seem like it, it, it's a good fit for this. It should, it should be bigger, especially when Ford's own Explorer has that huge 12 inch option on the new one. The Ram 1500 pickup and the heavy duty pickup from Ram also has the big vertical display. And they've got this huge um, digital screen in the gauge cluster here. It looks almost as big as that one, if not bigger. And it's awesome. It gives you your trip computer, towing information, off road information, everything. So it's kind of, kind of strange uh, to have those kind of weird size kind of like issues in here. But it's well featured though. Uh, tri zone climate control heated and cooled front seats, heated steering wheel, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can listen to your Lil Nas X to your heart's content. Uh, it's also got the trailer, uh, the pro trailer backup assist system. That's part of a $1,400 trailering package that I have. It also adds a 3.73 rear differential, heavy duty radiator, as well as the uh, trailer brake controller there. But the way this works is it's cool. Once you activate this and you're backing your trailer up, this is how you kind of tell it where to steer. This doesn't steer it. It tells the computers its direction you want to go. It, the computers do the rest. So it's actually really quite cool. Can't demonstrate it here, but I have tried it before and it's quite good. So, so nicely featured up here, some good storage, some strange questionable stuff, but quite comfortable and spacious and befitting of an SUV in this segment. You want leather? Oh, we got leather. Leather on the center console, leather on the wheel, the top of the dash here, top of the dash there, and leather on all the seats, of course, back seats, third row. Just awesome. It's all this great brown color too with contrasting tan piping. I'm sure there are other colors to select for the interior of the King Ranch, but personally, I don't see the point. This is so good, I'd have it no other way. So yes, no heavy duty V8 for the Expedition anymore. The only choice you have is a three and a half liter aluminum block twin turbo EcoBoost V6. Good for 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. That latter figure is the important one because it's more torque than I think like any of the competition makes. More than the Nissan Armada, more than the Toyota Sequoia, more than the Chevrolet Tahoe, all V8 powered trucks, by the way. So, and since it's crafted out of aluminum, as are many of the body panels and chassis components, like the F-150 pickup with which this shares a platform, it's got more capability. I think you could tow something like 4,170 pound or kilograms in the Expedition, which is good for a full large SUV or a large RV or a you know, sea doos ski doos dirt bikes, and so on. So it's got the capabilities. Now, that horsepower count, yeah, I wouldn't say that's astronomical at this level. It's not small, but it's not the biggest either. But when you have it in sport mode, as I do now, yes, there's a sport mode in this huge three-row SUV, go figure. There's got, it's got some get up and go. It's got a 10-speed automatic transmission, also your only choice, and that um, allows you to kind of stay in the meat of the power band a little more with turbocharged engines. Power band's often a little bit narrower, so to have more ratios to kind of get the most of it, well, those are good to have, and that's the case here, which is great. Of course, it's also, you know, um, mud and rut mode, snow mode, all the typical drive modes you expect from an SUV. I think there's something like eight drive modes if you include the trailering mode, so there you go, but that's great. Uh, the ride, yeah, it is, you know, it's truck-based, body on frame, so it's gonna get a little bit kind of wall you're gonna feel fore and aft movements as you go over bumps, but, at its, basis, at its basic level, it's never gonna be as bad as an unladen F-150 would be when there's less weight over the rear axle in a pickup, you get a lot more bounce. You're never gonna have that problem here, so there's that. And if you want even more comfort, the Platinum version allows for adaptive dampers, which should help keep the body a little bit more in check uh, as they read the road below. So that's something. The Platinum also provides different seats, and as I was a little concerned about in the last shot about these seats, well, it appears those concerns were somewhat warranted because now that I've started to kind of move around in my seat a little bit as I drive here, yeah, I could use more support and I could use a little more, a little more padding, which 
is surprising because it's a full-size American SUV, isn't? Aren't big cushy seats kind of like part of the MO of one of these? So, so I was a little bit surprised at that. They're not bad, but I thought they could be a little bit better. Um, and now, of course, another thing that comes into play when it comes to passenger comfort are the driver aid systems, and let me explain. This has an active lane keep assist system, which means if you wanted to, you can have it steer you back online if you start to kind of leave your lane. You can turn that feature off, but it's some people like to have that. This one I have turned off because I find it a little bit late to react, and what happens is that when it's late to react, you won't go over the line, but it it'll kind of steer you back online somewhat violently with a lot of steering lock, which kind of is uncomfortable for the occupants because it makes them shake you know, in their seats a little bit, right? So, so it's a little bit late to react. A lot of systems like this, including some from other Ford models, they'll follow a line down the middle of the road or the middle of your lane so that it never gets too far close to the lines. Whereas this one appears to be using some cameras to sense where the lines are on the road and so it makes sure not to go over them, but that means it's bouncing off them a little bit. So I've actually turned that off. Uh, I left the uh, warning system on that vibrates the steering wheel as you get too close to the line. You can adjust how intense that is. You adjust the intensity of that, which is good. You can't just adjust the intensity of the active portion though. Some vehicles allow you to ha have a later onset or earlier onset steering intervention. Can't do that here, it's either on or off. So there's that. But other than that though, this is a really good highway cruiser for sure. It's hugely spacious. It mostly rides really, really well. It's mostly pretty quiet. Good sound system and all that kind of stuff. This is a proper road trip vehicle, and I've had I'll have no problem doing a road trip in this. Um, although I do have to admit, fuel economy not quite as good as I thought it would be. I know another advantage of a smaller engine like that should be better fuel economy, but over 337 kilometers that I've driven here, a lot of it was on the highway. I'm at 18.3 liters per hundred kilometers. That's not a small amount. I know it's a big SUV, all that kind of stuff. And I've spent time idling doing my shoot and so on, but I was, I'm was a little surprised at that. I have done some city driving too, but 18.3, I was hoping to see it closer to the 15 level. I wouldn't expect much more from that, from a big vehicle like this, but you want to keep that in mind. Um, so great on the highway, uh, but let's see on the next shot uh, how well it does in the uh, urban environment as well. So as one might expect, uh, the Expedition is a bit of a beast in the city for sure. First of all, there's the there's the steering, which as you can see here is one, two, three, about three and a half turns lock to lock. Oops. So you're gonna have to be winding that wheel quite a lot, which has led to a couple of slightly hairy situations for me where I've just not had as much lock on as I needed. So, but that's what you, you know, you, you, that's what you're gonna get oftentimes with the big SUV like this. At least the steering can be done with just like, you know, outstretched index finger here. Like this is a pretty light steering wheel, which is great for a big heavy vehicle like this. So that's kind of, the lock is one thing, but I think a more, almost more important to a lot of people at this level is just, there you go. It's just easy to use the steering wheel, which is, which is nice. So, You've got your blind spot system, which is great. You've got your cruise to zero, your creep to zero, which is great, which means you can be in traffic uh, with cruise control on, like say in stop and go traffic, and it will stop you automatically. And I think it will re re start you rolling again. In fact, we're going to try that right here, right now. So there we go. So it's, I'm not hitting the brakes here at all. It's all the expedition doing it and it takes me all the way down to zero, which is awesome. Now, once we start rolling again here, it pulls you along too. So that's great for stop and go traffic. We'll turn that off for now. So that's a great, that's a great feature to have. Um, we got the blind spot system. The only thing is though, in this segment, the Koreans have just made a big push with the Kia Telluride and the Hyundai Palisade. And those two vehicles offer some really, really slick driver aid features, namely their blind spot system, which gives you a camera in your gauge cluster of your blind spot. So on your left and your right side, so when you activate either one of the, the indicator in either direction, it shows you what's going around you. That's something I love to have in something as big as this. That's great to have. And also what those vehicles have, oh, so this guy's not actually turning left then, okay, uh, is also what those vehicles have is their, um, they have the, the rear seat communication feature, which actually uses microphones in the vehicle to talk with the people in the second and third row. That's more of an issue on the highway as we were just on than it is here, but still another kind of tech feature that that they have for a little bit 
well, quite a lot less money than this actually. So that's something to think about. But in the city though, with the expedition, the view out is good and that's really nice in the city. I can see all around me, no problem. I don't have the special blind spot systems, but let's be honest, some, some would argue my statement there in that cars are too helped along these anyway. There's too many autonomous features now. I don't know if that's necessarily something I agree with, but here I can still do my shoulder checking properly and I've got a great view out. So, and the steering wheel is nice and easy to turn too. Plus I've got uh, creep to zero. So these are all good features to have in the city for a big vehicle like this, as is the self parking feature, which we're also gonna demonstrate in the next clip here. So stay tuned for that. So a great feature this Expedition has, which is really good for a big vehicle and kind of like the urban jungle, is the self-park feature. So I'm going to demonstrate it now. I see a parking spot there behind that BMW. So I'm going to act, I'm already in drive. I'm going to creep forward. I'm going to activate Park Assist by hitting the P steering wheel button here. It tells you that it's going to search for a parking spot. Parking, search for parking. And it's going to, not going to tell me to stop until it reads that vehicle there. And there it goes. So it's found a space. So you stop the vehicle, activate reverse. Hands off. Uh, I'm not even accelerating here. I'm just using my, the brake to kind of modulate speed, letting it creep into position. And wheels doing all the work itself, which is pretty pretty funny. My, my two and a half year old calls it the magic car because of this, which is pretty funny. And exit position tells you to go forward. It's going to watch for that vehicle ahead of me there and give me enough. I'll give it a bit of throttle here because we are on a hill. Bit of throttle. And there you go. Parallel parking. All done. Awesome to have in the urban jungle. So, admittedly, it's not the smallest spot in the world, but we still get to see how close we came to the curb. Remember, I did nothing for this. I didn't do any steering inputs whatsoever. And let's see how we did. Yeah, just to be about a half foot off the curb on the back wheel. About a half foot off the curb on the front wheel, that's good. I think most Canadian cities, the max you want to be off the curb is 30 centimeters, or like the size of one of those yellow plastic rules you used to get in grade school. And there you go. No doubt about it that the Ford Expedition is a fantastic road trip companion. Great highway cruiser, awesome family hauler. In fact, probably a haul a lot more than your family. It could probably haul you, your family, your five Great Danes, plus five other families and their wares. That's how much space there is in here. Like the twin turbo powertrain, like the 4x4 system, the aluminum construction is good. The interior with that brown leather styling is awesome. The driver aids, for the most part, are well implemented, but it does come in at around $81,000 for this truck. And I've seen journalists drive this very same truck say, well, if we're talking about that kind of money, then we have to be comparing it to the luxury German, German luxury manufacturers. But I tend to disagree with them there. In fact, I think they're way off. You're not going to get a BMW X7 or a Mercedes GLS for less than $100,000. And the top trim of this, the Platinum Max version tops out at 86 grand. But that doesn't mean that Ford is safe and the Expedition is at the top of the pile when it comes to three row full size SUVs. You've got the competition from the US and Japan, but more than ever, you've got the competition from Korea. And the Hyundai Palisade and Kia Telluride are two awesomely engineered three row full size SUVs. About as much interior space as this has, V6 power, great interior um, build and fit and finish, especially the Telluride, which looks awesome inside. Plus, all those great features we talked about before, their blind spot system. And while you've got to upgrade to a palace, uh, a platinum to get the foot activated tailgate when it comes to the expedition, in the Palisade and the Telluride, you can just walk up to the tailgate with a key fob in your pocket and it'll open. I think that feature is available on like all trims and for a lot less money than this costs. There's always going to be people that love their body on frame SUVs. They love their American vehicles or they love their Fords or whatever the case may be. And this is a very good vehicle. But if you're just starting to get into the market for a full size three row SUV, you owe it to yourself. To, yes, check this one out, but check out those Koreans as well. Hope you liked the video. If so, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. If not, no hard feelings. Uh, I can also be followed on Instagram at Dan the Wheelman and on Twitter at Dan the Wheelman as well. Uh, thanks for tuning into this video. And please tune in next week from the next video in my Big Guy Small Car series where I'm driving a really small car that I'm really excited to drive. But I'm not going to spoil the surprise and tell you what it is just yet. You'll have to tune in next week. So until then, sayonara, partner.